Hey everybody, we have a little bit of a different kind of video for you today. We're here in the studio at Drexel University. I've got some of my students with me. This is John, Kai, and Jasmine. I will link to all of their LinkedIn profiles in the description. Uh, John and Jasmine are graduating in, what, June of 25, right, 2025? Kai's graduating a year later, uh, but all three of them have been working with me in Unreal Engine virtual production and motion capture and all sorts of those things. So uh, yeah, their info is in the description. So what we're going to do today is look at how we can use our Vicon system to calibrate for a video camera. We have a Blackmagic video camera in the studio. We have a camera crown on there. And Vicon can track it, but instead of tracking based only on the crown, we're going to have Vicon Shogun calibrate for the precise lens distortion and position of the lens of that camera relative to the crown so that that data can be streamed to things like Unreal Engine for our virtual production. So uh, let's get into positions here and uh, we'll go through the process. Uh, John is running Vicon Shogun, Kai's on the camera, and Jasmine's going to be using our calibration wand. So taking a look at Shogun right now, uh, one of the things that's different about our setup is that we do have a Blackmagic deck link board in the computer that runs Shogun. So that deck link board is receiving SDI signal from the camera, and that allows Shogun to access the camera. Now, for us to be able to properly calibrate a video camera with the motion capture system, the system that is tracking has to have the same genlock and time code as the video camera. So if we move the uh, deck link board out of the way, one of the things to look at in our Vicon system is on the left-hand side, it lists the Vicon cameras first. If we uh, go past those, then there's a lock studio in our system. So the way our mocap system is set up is we're creating it. We have a genlock generator. It's generating a lock signal at 30 hertz. So we're running 30 frames a second for our standard video equipment. That genlock signal is being fed into an ATEM constellation, which then knits that with time code. And the SDI out of the constellation is being sent to the lock studio for Vicon, as well as the camera input, so that both the Vicon system and the camera are receiving the same genlock signal and the same time code. That means that they're going to be opening and closing frames at the same time, at least every 30, you know, 30 frames a second. The Vicon system is actually shooting at 120, which is a multiple of 30, but the Vicon system is keeping the same cadence in synchronization with the video genlock signal. So we need to activate the genlock and time code for Vicon to make sure it's locked in. So John's going in the upper left-hand corner and he's gonna select the SDI genlock input and activate it. Now genlock is active and we'll select Genlock, I'm sorry, time code from SDI and activate that. And now we have green lights for both Genlock and time code in the Vicon system. And by virtue of the camera having the SDI connection from the constellation, it's also receiving the same Genlock and time code. So now the system is in synchronization with the camera. Now we're ready to go ahead and calibrate the camera. So go ahead and switch from the 3D view to our camera view. Now, by default, this is our standard Vicon capture cameras, but instead of those, select the Black Magic camera in the list on the left after the lock studio. There we go. So there is the SDI feed from the Black Magic camera going into the deck link board for Shogun. And this will allow us to have Shogun calibrate to the calibration wand that Jasmine's holding. So Jasmine, lift up that wand. So this is the active wand version two. Go ahead and power it up. We'll see the LED lights on that. And those lights are visible by both the Blackmagic camera as well as the infrared Vicon cameras. So next to each one of those visible red lights on this active one is an infrared light. And the uh, system is aware of the exact placement of all of those different lights. So John has gone ahead and gone to the calibration panel. Normally, we will do a wand wave for all cameras in the system, but we did that earlier for the infrared Vicon cameras. Now we're only going to calibrate for the Blackmagic camera. Just as a double check, we want to click the wrench and make sure we're set to active wand version 2, which I think we are. Yes? No? Oh, okay. There we go. And go back to there. And so with the Vicon system set up, we have the Blackmagic camera selected. And so John's going to click the selected button and the calibration process will begin. 
Oh, let's turn off our studio lights. Thank you. All right, there we go. And so one of the things that I use as an analogy for this calibration process is to consider the wand like it's a squeegee. And we want to squeegee the entire windshield of what's in front of the camera. So we want to go from all the corners to all the corners in the frame. And Vicon's going to measure the positions of these lights and use that information to not only calculate the precise position of the camera and lens, but also the distortion in the lens. So there we go. That's done capturing data. Go ahead and you can fire up the lights in the studio. We can turn off the wand. And now if we go back into the 3D view, we should see the camera in position. Wonderful. Now, we want to be really careful now not to touch the camera because that's in a precisely calculated position. Now we want to identify the camera crown. Um, with the lights on, I'm just going to move one of our cameras in here to show you that we have this uh, tracking crown on our studio camera. The little white markers are reflective, so that the Vicon cameras see each one of those as a, a bright point, and that's how we're able to see them in the 3D view. The arrangement of these markers is such that we have one marker in the back and one in the front, and if we draw a line between those, that's roughly the direction the camera's aimed in. And then there's also a marker that's directly above the halfway point, and that is kind of our up axis. So in order to set up our prop in Shogun, we're going to select in that order, the back marker first. So go ahead and Alt, click, drag to get that back marker, and then Control, Alt to uh, select the front marker second, and then Control, Alt again to select the top marker, and then we select the rest of the markers in our little constellation of uh, markers. There we go. So now all of the markers for this prop are selected. We'll go and define that as a subject, camera crown one. Go ahead and create it. And also, uh, Vicon has two different modes for tracking props. The default mode is not necessarily as precise as the object mode. So we'll go into the settings and activate object mode. And this is more precise and more stable, and so better suited for camera tracking. Uh, a prop that we're going to have moving faster uh, might choose to have that option switched off, but with a camera, we're generally going to move slow, and we want a very accurate, stable track, and so that's why we activate that. So going back to our uh, other panel, what we want to do is link that camera crown to the camera. So in the upper right-hand panel, we've already got the crown selected, so holding Alt and Control, select the camera. That should activate our camera link button and activate that. And now the camera itself is linked to that camera crown. So if uh, Kai goes ahead and moves that camera around a little bit in the real world, then the crown is going to be moving and Vicon detects that and then it drives the camera with that moving crown. And the best thing about this is that the data that Vicon is streaming is both the crown position and translation rotation, as well as the camera. So we can actually get a precise position of the nodal point of the lens of this camera, wherever that crown goes. And then one other little example is if we go back to the camera view, John, and then under view filters, uh, look for 3D and activate that. And then Kai, if you would mind panning down to the floor. So this is showing us the Vicon digital floor relative to Jasmine's feet. And that is tracking really well. So that is how we track or set up a calibrated video camera with Vicon. That data can then be streamed in Unreal Engine for virtual production with green screens or LED walls and projection. So I hope this helps. And a later tutorial, we'll get into the Unreal Engine side of this. But until then, have fun.